the following reference is really going to date me, but one of the most popular films of my generation was Crocodile Dundee. It starred Paul Hogan as Mick Dundee, a rugged Australian bushman who, after years in the remote outback, travels to New York City. Completely out of his element, Mick finds himself both amused and perplexed by the strange customs and behaviors of city life, leading to a series of humorous cultural clashes. One night, Mick is walking with his potential love interest, Sue, through a deserted area of the city, when a young man approaches and asks for a light. Sue, sensing danger, grows tense, but Mick remains unfazed. Yeah, sure, kid, he says, casually offering a light. Suddenly, the young man pulls out a switchblade and demands, and your wallet. Sue quietly urges, Mick, give him your wallet. What for? Mick asks calmly. He's got a knife, she replies. Mick chuckles, glancing at the small blade. That's not a knife, he says with a grin, and then draws out an enormous hunting knife. That's a knife. This scene was reenacted in schoolyards by many boys my age. It became part of everyday language and pop culture, appearing in TV shows, movies, and video games. The phrase was often used as a humorous comeback, to one-up or, or diminish a perceived threat. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Something similar happens in today's gospel. Nathaniel is astonished by Jesus' knowledge about him before they've even met. Impressed, he declares, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. But Jesus responds, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Who knows when Nathaniel saw something even greater? It probably wasn't long, though. What Jesus described, a, a vision of heaven, came to those who stayed close to him. This is, in fact, what happens when people remain in God's presence. They witness miracles. Most people probably don't imagine that ordinary folk experience miracles. Perhaps it's only the very holy ones. Religion is often viewed as a way of understanding the world. Figures like Albert Einstein have talked about a rational mind behind the ordered cosmos. Furthermore, a belief in a higher power provides foundation for moral values and purpose, addressing questions that materialistic worldviews struggle to answer. But to that I say, with a chuckle and a grin, that's not religion. When people approach me as a priest to talk about God or express a desire to know more about Christianity, my first impulse isn't to give them an explanation or, or hand them an instructive text. Undoubtedly, books and classes are valuable, and they can deepen one's faith. But when someone wants to truly encounter the divine, I tell them to turn up at church. Perhaps you think I'm biased. I probably am. But once you've experienced what happens in a place like this, your perspective shifts those who regularly attend Mass here know what I'm talking about. Every time Mass is celebrated in this church, miraculous things happen. It is an experience that evokes awe and reverence in the presence of something outside of human comprehension. 
heaven opens and angels descend. Barriers fall apart. And in a cloud of smoke, God's messengers move. Bells are rung and creation shifts. At this altar, ordinary bread and wine are transformed. God appears. An encounter with God is more than an intellectual understanding. It is a profound revelation of something beyond this world. That's religion. Seek the Lord in the writings of great minds, in art and music, something near and dear to me, on a mountaintop, and in acts of loving kindness and service. You will find God there, without a doubt. But if you want to see something greater, heaven opened and angels appearing, very truly I tell you, come to Mass. <laughs>